Live Text Access Training for Real-Time Interlingual Subtitlers. This is Unit 1, Understanding Accessibility, Element 1, Basic Concepts. This is part two of the video lecture about accessibility, usability, and universal design. In part one, we talked about universal design. Here in part two, we will define the terms of accessibility and usability. My name is Rocío Bernabe Caro from the Internationale Hochschule Este in München in Germany. I have prepared this video lecture in collaboration with Fiero Cavallo and the European Federation of Art of Hearing, in short, EFO. On completion of this training sequence, you will be able to explain the concepts of um, and the differences between usability, accessibility, and universal design. In this second part of the video lecture, we will discuss the concept of accessibility and usability, and how they interpret and how they play a role in the philosophy of universal design. So, what is the difference between accessible, usable, and universally designed? Accessibility and usability are abilities or characteristics of a product. Accessibility is the ability of a product to be accessed, while usability is the ability of a product to be used. Products that have been designed following the principles of universal design should be accessible and usable for persons with the broadest range of abilities and capabilities. However, similar, these concepts of accessibility and usability are not interchangeable. Moreover, there are two sides of a coin. Accessibility is a prerequisite to usability. If we cannot access a product or a building or a text, we cannot use it. However, being accessible does not always imply that a product can be used for its intended purpose. For instance, if a video has subtitles but the font is too small, almost illegible, or the text is full of mistakes, the video will be accessible but not usable. As we can see in this example, design plays a role in this equation. Let's take a closer look at this concept. Well-designed things are more difficult to notice than things that are poorly designed. This is a statement by Don Norman, a university professor at the University of California. According to Don Norman, we often do not notice good design because things are well designed and they fit our needs. Thus, we can say that the use of well designed products becomes easier. It is effective because we can reach our goals without trouble and even find it enjoyable. Conversely, bad design hinders us. It makes things difficult or even impossible. It even upsets us. The illustration shows a very badly designed sign. Indeed, I still have not found out if I should go to the right or to the left to reach room number 104. Don Norman points out that being a good designer means being a good observer who finds ways to make a product useful. Don Norman illustrates with an image what usable means. The cover of his book, The Design of Everyday Things, I can only recommend it, shows a beautiful red teapot. The steam from the warm water raises and the viewer's desire to have a cup of tea is more or less immediate. However, a closer look at the handle and at the spot and makes us realize that we will never be able to pour that hot water into a cup. Because both handle and spot 
are placed on the same side of the pot. Is the design of the teapot appealing? Yes, it is. Is it usable? Well, now that's another story. This is what um, I mean by intended purpose. If this teapot was designed to be looked at, then the designer did a great job. However, if the teapot was meant for making tea, the design failed. The International Organization of Internationalization, ISO in short, defines usability in the standard 9241-11 from 2018. Allow me to read it aloud. Usability is the extent to which a product can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in a specified context of use. Interesting, here the three dimensions of usability actually, namely effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction. We can say, that usability describes how well a product is designed so that it is effective, efficient, or in other words, easy to use, and friendly to use, not difficult to use. The extent to which a person considers a product usable is a personal estimation. This means that we cannot buy usability. Usability emerges in the interaction of a person with a product, whether a service or communication, you know. The degree of usability of a product can be assessed by answering these questions. First, effectiveness. Can users achieve, achieve their goals? Efficiency. How much effort does it require from users? And finally, satisfaction. How easy to learn and use is the product? This interplay between accessibility, usability, and design make us realize that providing access through subtitles implies conveying a message that is usable by users. Real-time subtitlers can improve the usability of their text texts by asking themselves just these questions before the job. First, who are the users and their needs? And what level of expertise do they have? Also, do I have as a real-time sub subtitler the level of expertise needed? Another question would be, what are their goals, the goals of the users? What do they want to achieve? How can subtitles help them to achieve these goals? Lastly, the context. What specificities have the context? What problems may the users or real-time subtitles face in this context? What type of subtitling is called for? Verbatim, sensatim? Video lectures from element two and three of this unit will enable you to know more about users and their needs and how to embed accessibility in working settings. To recap, we can say, that universal design is a goal worthwhile pursuing. Designs that are for all not only take into account accessibility and usability, but put target users and their needs at focus. Some say that design is an art. In this spirit, we could say that real-time subtitlers are artists of inclusive real-time communication. Do you see yourself as such? As for now, I say goodbye. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide for Unit 1 and in the PowerPoint presentation. LTA, Live Text Access. Universiteit Autonoma de Barcelona, SDI, Internationale Hochschule.
Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici, ZDF Digital, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People, FO, Velotype, Sub-T Access, European Certification and Qualification Association, ECQA, co-funded by the Erasmus Plus Program of the European Union. Erasmus Plus Project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-00421 The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.